Hey, welcome back. In this section, we're focusing on React Forms. So forms are obviously very, very important to making a lot of applications, and the way they work in React is a little different than you might expect. So we only have two goals here. It's a pretty straightforward section. We want to build forms with React and understand what the term controlled components mean. And for us, those are really gonna be one and the same. The forms we build are going to be part of controlled components. So let's start with the basics of forms. So I've already mentioned that forms work a little differently than most other DOM elements, uh, especially in React. But just in general, forms are a bit different because they, they almost have their own internal state. They have data that the form is keeping track of, that the form knows about, that the rest of your application might not know about until you hit submit or click a button or the user hits enter. Some event triggers your code knowing about the data. For example, this really simple form here it has nothing to do with React, just plain HTML, has a label and an input and then a button. Usually in a traditional application, you have this input, a user starts typing something into it, your app might not know about it, it might not be doing anything with that data until you hit add. So the traditional workflow would look something like this. Here we have a simple code pen with a form. I'm gonna use jQuery. So we're listening for a submission, or a submission, a, a submit event on this form. And then we would go and grab whatever data we needed, probably something from the input. And then I'll select from the input where name is equal to username in case we have multiple inputs. And then we would grab the value from that and save that to a variable. Let's call it user and then do something with it. In our case, let's just alert a message that says you entered and then we'll add in user. Okay, so very simple example, but in this case, our code doesn't know what's inside of this input until after we click the button, the submit is triggered, we prevent the default behavior of the form so the page doesn't reload, and then we're grabbing the user or the username using .val. So I type something in, I click, and then it tells me you entered ASDA, blah, 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 blah. I type kitty, you entered kitty. This is all just to give you an example of something that we're not really going to do in React. The way we, we create forms, the way we structure them, we don't really have this knowledge gap where you don't know what's happening in a given form until somebody clicks or submits that form. Instead, we involve React state early on. So essentially we'll have a function that handles the submission of the form and at the same time has access to the data the user entered. It's something called a controlled component, this technique. There are uncontrolled components and controlled components. And we'll talk more about the difference, really more about when you would use each later on, but for the most part throughout this entire course from here on out, we'll be using controlled components. So let's talk more about what that means. As we've already discussed, form elements in regular HTML maintain their own internal state and they update it based off of whatever a user types in. The problem is in React, we have our own state, right? And it's really central to everything about React, but it's only updated with set state, as we've already talked a lot about. So the question is, how do we get some input, let's say a text input, to automatically update our React state? So we have some, let's call it username in the state, and we want it to be 100% in sync with the input in the form. Instead of waiting until a user clicks to grab the value and do something with it, we want React to know right away what the value is in that form every time it changes. So React becomes the one source of truth. We no longer have some mystery data in a form. React knows about it. The React state is our source of truth. So React will control what is shown in the input but also what happens when the user types. So as the user deletes something or types something new or alters something, the state is going to be updated. And that's what we mean when we say controlled components. These input elements are being controlled. They don't have much freedom. <laughs> They're not keeping their own little data. React has its fingers all over those forms, those inputs, and it knows about every change as it happens. So here's an example. We'll type this out in just a moment. What we have is a form and on submit, there's some event that's called handle submit. But if we look at the input right here, the value of the input is set to this.state.fullName. So in our state, we have full name initialized to an empty string. So this input at the beginning will show just an empty input. There won't be anything in there. But this is the magical, well, it's not really magical at all, but this is the important part. On change equals this.handle change. 
So every time this input changes, we're calling some method called handle change. Now it's not filled out just yet, it's just comments, but what it will do is update the state and update full name every time this value changes because on change is going to be fired every time the user changes anything in this input. So to recap how it fits together, we set the value attribute on our input to match some part of the state, this.state.fullName. So every time it re-renders, that value is going to display exactly what is in React state. There is no gap of knowledge. React knows what's going on and the form displays the value of full name from the state then that displayed value will update as the user types. Handle change is called over and over and over again when a user types something. Each time that state changes, our value that is displayed changes because React is controlling what is displayed. The annoying part about doing all of this is that our forms get pretty long and we also have to write a lot of these handle change methods. There's an easy way to make multiple of them we'll talk about uh, in just a couple of videos, but for now, you'll see our forms do get a little long. So the handle change method could look something like this. Every time handle change is called, we're just doing a this.set state. Full name is now equal to the current value of event.target. Event contains information about the event object, what happened. Target is going to be the input that changed and value is its new value. So let me show you an example. Here I have a very simple form component. Right now, there's nothing in here about a form, but I'll do that now. So form, let's do a simple input, type equals text. And then before we go any further, what's this form going to display? Let's just do username. So if it's going to be username, we need to have a constructor. I guess we're not going to use props, but I like to put it there. But we have to have an initial value for username. So username can start as an empty string. Then inside of this input, we set that value to be this.state.username. And then anytime it changes on change equals, we'll call this.handle change, which doesn't exist yet. So we can define that up here. Handle change takes the event object. And all we do is this.set state. And we take username and we update it to be event.target.value. Now, because this is an event, we do need to make sure we're binding this here. So let's do this dot handle change equals this dot handle change dot bind this. Okay, so I'm already rendering app or form inside of the app. I'm exporting down here. There's no button involved right now or anything, but we should see an input. And if I open up my React dev tools and we look at the state for form, notice that username is empty. If I start typing something like H, E L L O username is changing in state each time. In addition, if I change the value over here inside of the dev tools and I hit enter, you'll see that the value is updated over here at the same time. So we've linked them together. React knows about any change that happens in here. It will automatically update the state because of the code we've written with handle change. Now, if we wanted to do something when the form is submitted, we have a couple options. We can do it when a button is clicked. We can also do it when the form is submitted. So let's do on submit equals this dot handle submit and handle submit doesn't exist. So handle submit and uh, we can use the event object. We're probably not going to use it inside of this function. All that I'll do is alert, you know, something like this. You typed and then add in this dot state dot username and then we can alert that. And afterwards, what we normally do is reset the value of username. So this.set state, we're going to set username to be empty. Okay, so we have to bind once again, this.handle submit equals this.handle submit dot bind this. And then we should add a button so we can actually submit the form. So when you click this button, handle submit is called handle submit doesn't actually grab anything from the form itself it's not selecting any css it has nothing to do with inputs or forms or buttons all that it does is it looks in the state what's already in our state well because of our handle change because of the way our form is set up and how it's controlled by react the state is automatically up to date with whatever is in this input they are one and the same so if i come over here and type something like my username is kitty and i hit submit 
says you typed kitty. If I type something else in here, that's what we're gonna see. And notice that afterwards my data is wiped out because that's what I, oh, well also the page is refreshing. That's actually my fault. If you notice, watch the URL, you'll see that it does change. That is because I'm not preventing default, which is the default behavior of a form when it's submitted. So now that shouldn't happen. Let's just verify. Okay, so we're no longer refreshing. All right, so that was our first basic controlled form. Just to review the flow here, we have a value attribute on an input and it's set to some piece of the state, this.state.username. So React is going to display the value of the state right there. And then anytime that input changes from a user, we call hand, well, we don't call it, but handle change is called automatically and it sets the state the same exact thing that we're displaying up here, we're setting that piece of the state every time that input changes. Okay.